Okay, we're back live at EMC World 2010. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and, and we're back for continuous coverage, wall to wall of EMC World 2012. Uh, we're live on SiliconAngle.tv, and uh, this week's a busy week for us, and uh, my co-host Dave Vellante and I are breaking down all the news here at EMC World, but I'm going to fly tonight back to San Francisco to attend the HBase conference. First ever historic HBase conference where all the smartest open source contributors, the brightest minds and the leading companies are getting together in San Francisco for HBase conference, hbasecon.com. Um, go there, check it out. Apple, Facebook, and Netflix, all the top guys are going to be there uh, developing out ideas around accelerating the open source movement around big data. Obviously, Cloudera is uh, putting it on, and uh, Dave, it's going to be an exciting event tomorrow. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's going to be exciting because I'm all alone, John. I, I'm going to miss <laughs> you, but, um, but you know, it's funny you mentioned HBase. We were at SAP last week, and you, you had a little session with Hasso. You saw him at one of the, 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 the blogger media parties and started talking to him. And, Telling him, you know, about you know some of the things that you've been doing in big data, and you mentioned HBase, and of course he didn't know it, what wasn't it was. It wasn't on his It wasn't on his personal radar. He said, "Oh, I have guys who know that." But well, I mean, I'm sure he does, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he does. Know. But but, he, but he, he, my, my point is that a lot of people don't know what it is. You know, I think a lot of people HBase is that's new to them. You know, and um, I'm glad you're going to be there covering it because I think it's one of the going to be the hottest trends, you know, of the decade. I think it's a yeah, war course, going on. For and of course, SiliconAngle.com is always on the ground. And our goal, SiliconAngle.com, is to go where the stories are. And we will bring the Cube, our flagship telecast, to events where there's action. We'll do wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We'll go to events in San Francisco. We're expanding our team. And you're going to see more and more great coverage coming on from SiliconAngle.tv through the rest of the year. Uh, it's an exciting opportunity for everyone in the media business, uh, us included. And uh, it's great to have a great research team with Wikibon.org uh, on the team with SiliconAngle. It's been great. Um, but Dave, news going on today, obviously, um, this is the first day after Facebook uh, went public last week. It's the first day back. And uh, a lot of big news on Facebook. Uh, first one is I was there when Mark Zuckerberg got married. Actually, was taking a walk around the block. He lives, like, literally, you know, 500 yards from my did house. You, did you stop in and say hi? <laughs> I no, I saw a lot of action there. I didn't know it was a wedding. We didn't find out the next day. It was about a small, intimate crowd, about 100 people. Mark Zuckerberg got married um, in Palo Alto at his house. And uh, my kids were looking in, in, over, the, over the wall. I'm like, hey, give the guy some privacy. Um, <laughs> Who was there? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, hey, here's my phone, take some photos. Um, literally could have made some dough on the paparazzi factor. But you know what, give the guy some privacy. He lives in the neighborhood. Um, Mark Zuckerberg, congratulations on your, uh, your wedding. And I want to say congratulations to everyone at Facebook for one, an amazing IPO. And again, SiliconANGLE has an opinion on this. We were first on the record, on the record to actually say the IPO was a smashing success. Immediately followed by everyone else kind of jumping on saying uh, it was a success. After the people in New York were slamming it, mainly because in the New York circles, it was not a good IPO. Mainly because NASDAQ had some broken trading on the software glitches, um, and two, not a lot of people made money in the, in the free market. So again, this is another example where, where Mark Zuckerberg and team hacked Wall Street in the sense that they got what they wanted. The goal of an IPO, Dave, I've always said, was to raise money. That's always been the case for companies to go public, is to raise money. They raised billions of dollars, I think 12 or 16 billion, all said and done, one, so they achieved that objective, check. Next objective of an IPO is to get liquidity for your initial investors and shareholders. Check, check. a lot of people got liquid. <laughs> check. Um, houses are going for sale all over the place in Palo Alto, real estate's going through the roof. Um, so, obviously, check. And three, is to make the public stock available, and they put out hundreds of millions of shares in the open market, and that was an objective achieved. And also, keep the underwriting costs down. The, the bankers, who are usually the ones who are in the news for gouging companies, got minimal fees, and they had to support the stock at 38. So at the end of the day, check, they're in check. So all these are check marks, A plus IPO. To the general investor, it's still cloudy, whether well, it's going to be a great success. I'm bullish on Facebook. I think I'm long on Facebook. I think in the short term the stock's going to dip, and I think it's going to have the same graph of the trough of disillusionment, and then it's going to rise back up as Facebook starts to deploy their business model. So to me, Facebook's business model has to do with two words, big data. Display advertising was their bread and butter, billions of dollars in revenue off the massive page views that they get. But interestingly enough, Dave, per my analysis in my blog post, that their operating revenue has plummeted ever since Facebook opened up the timeline. 
and that timeline was the new interface that actually gets more user interaction, more data. So what you're seeing is Facebook moving to a data-centric business model. This is what's the theme here at EMC World, that's why this news is relevant, and I think that Facebook is going to emerge, if they don't screw up their user experience, will emerge with a really killer data product providing contextual analysis, predictive analytics, using all the things of big data to provide a better user experience and ultimately provide transactions for end users. And that'll take the uh, revenue per, per user into the thousands, and that makes it a $10 trillion company. Well, you know, you've made some interesting points the last couple of week, week or so about um, you know, the display ads and sort of the bottom feeder of the ad business. And um, we, you, we, you actually wrote a piece that I thought was excellent. Uh, when you look at the three, what I consider massive, you know, internet-based uh, IPOs, Netscape obviously first, very frothy, not really any business model, sort of just, you know, got crushed by Microsoft, and then Google with a very solid business model. You made the point that Google had a very strong advertising base, pay-per-click uh, model, uh, you know, AdSense, AdWords model prior to its IPO, very, very clear where the cash was coming from. Um, and Facebook, a little fuzzy, you know, more Netscape-like, but, because of what you just said about their data play, I think that's a lot more promise. Yeah, so I think, Dave, you're right on the money, and I think this is the conversation in the elite circles in the tech community, uh, to my, my point about the Facebook being more like Netscape, because everyone was comparing Facebook to Google, because, let's face it, Facebook has been rating Google's top talent since they started getting massive traction, so all the top executives at Facebook are all either ex-Googlers or super geeks from Firefox and or these um, alpha geek communities, small startups that they've acquired. So on the business side, a lot of Google talent. On the tech side, a lot of emerging alpha, alpha uh, engineers and hackers. Um, that being said, it's easy to make the comparison, oh, Facebook's like the next Google, but not really. They're more like Netscape. Netscape's browser was a watershed moment for the industry when the internet was, was hitting the scene, the web, and Netscape failed when Microsoft crushed them with their, their predatory uh, moves around the browser and operating system. But unlike Google, Facebook has not yet emerged with that killer business model. When, when Google went public, they actually had years under their belt with cost per click advertising. That thing was a cash machine, as pointed out by guys like John Battelle, who wrote a book about it, and Google was absolutely, definitively had a solid business model. Organic search value proposition and paid advertising. Facebook doesn't have that. So that's why I think it's more like Netscape. So the risk here is that Facebook could become Netscape. If an, a, a new entrant comes in and attacks the market, can put risk on Facebook. That being said, I think they're going to be more like Google. I personally believe that Facebook is too strong of a company. I think the talent inside the company is strong. I think they have a young CEO in Mark Zuckerberg and a very lean hacker mentality. And Dave, I think that I'm bullish on Facebook. And now John, you alluded to this morning that you had some information that uh, you were tracking down. I wonder if uh, you're ready to share that? I mean, what... I'm not ready to share that unless uh, we want to dive into it a little prematurely. I'm tracking a major story developing here at EMC World. I got sources ringing me all morning. I was up at six o'clock in the morning. I'm still tracking down, getting texts as we speak a little from uh, sources inside the company. But I see a major um, uh, thing going on with VMware and EMC. Um, Stay tuned, I hope to get more information, but uh, you'll hear it here first on siliconangle.tv. There's some really amazing breaking news coming down the pike. Again, it's rumor speculation at this point. I'm waiting to get some more confirmation, but there's some huge things going on at the, at the upper levels of EMC, VMware, and another company that I can't really talk about. So, so this is going to be a game changer. It's going to change the landscape uh, of those two companies, um, and I don't want to do any more teasing out than that. So, if you're watching right now, watch SiliconAngle.com, watch the Cube. We're going to break that story for you. Yeah. So um, the big news here, of course, is uh, you know 4,200 <laughs> product announcements. Actually, it's 42 from EMC, uh, spanning uh, uh, the VMAX line, the VNX line, the Atmos line, the Isilon line. Uh, we heard from uh, Rick Walsworth earlier about DataBridge and AppSync. Um, uh, BRS, we had BJ Jenkins on, he's talking about new Avamar and, uh, and, and new products from, um, from Data Domain, they added Boost to Greenplum. Um, 
a lot of stuff going on here, John. Yeah, so Dave, I'm looking at the news around the web and on SiliconANGLE in particular, um, and there's a lot of interesting news happening going on. One, Kit Dodson, a contributor at SiliconANGLE.com, has got a good story. The White House chooses budget official as successor for the cybersecurity chief. So here's an interesting story. The guy who was the cybersecurity czar, Howard Schmidt, is retiring to spend more time with family and friends and ride his motorcycle amidst strange atmosphere of legislation around the state of cybersecurity. Security is the hottest thing going on around the globe. We're hearing it also within the enterprise. This guy just up and quits to ride his motorcycle. Um, doesn't smell right. And ironically, the person that they're going to tap to replace this guy is a 17-year veteran of the Office of Management and Budget, National Security Division. So I'm, I'm questioning that move. Obviously the implications and the optics are interesting and we're going to keep on following that. Uh, Alex Williams has a story about EMC's flash strategy, is the first about a concept of data decay. Obviously betting that data velocity demands are, are, of spinning disk are, are, are going to be more of a backup and recovery. The role of flash has become paramount. So Alex has a great story on that. And finally, Bert Lattimore wrote up a, um, a story around David Floyer's article around limited value of Oracle's exadata. So David Floyer, chief researcher at Wikibom, uh, wrote a post about exadata and apparently in digging around and from his analysis, it's not doing as well as it could be. So that's interesting, we're going to continue to watch that. Uh, and just in general, um, you're just seeing a lot of activity and as I talked about at the, at the big stage here at EMC World, um, the number one trend driving this in disruption in this business right now is the consumerization of, of IT, the consumerization. And that is about applications, smartphones, and all that's totally impacting the enterprise. And the enterprise, or IT, is one of the most exciting areas right now. We're in, in Silicon Valley, the top VCs are investing heavily in IT and enterprise. So, again, a lot of great stuff going on. Um, enterprise and IT is a hot investment area for startups. It's also an innovation ground for the big players like EMC and VMware and Cisco and Brocade. And those guys are absolutely rolling out big moves around cloud and big data. For EMC, it's pretty clear what their strategy is. Cloud is about IT revolution or evolution, and big data is about business analytics, and that the business value and the business transformation in analytics and big data is a key thing. And on the product side, cloud is about IT infrastructure. Put them two together, you have the perfect storm for innovation. So that's kind of the latest news. Um, we're here at SiliconAngle.com's continuous coverage of EMC World 2012. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and we have wall-to-wall -wall coverage, eight hours a day, today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. I'll be in San Francisco tomorrow with my team up there covering the HBase conference, and I just wrote a post uh, on SiliconAngle.com around HBase, and so um, watch SiliconAngle.com for all the coverage from EMC World and all the coverage from HBase conference tomorrow, um, and uh, we'll be right back after the short break um, from with our next guest.